Dave from Car Speed again. And, you know, guys, over the last few weeks, you know, I've, I've got a lot of messages and, uh, you know, read a lot of comments on social media. And, you know, I try to give you guys what you want to see. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man of the people. Right? So, I've got a lot of messages on rear hub spacing. So, this week, that's what we're talking about. For their gracious aid. I am so sorry <laughs> to my world. I am so sorry to my world. This is not what we want. <laughs> so what is rear hub spacing, you know, and, and how do you measure it? Well, rear hub spacing is distance between the rear axle hub and the outside main frame rail of the chassis, okay? When you measure it, I usually measure mine from... The, the, the chassis rail itself to the outer facing hub that makes contact with the wheel, like so. So, I know you guys didn't tune in this video to see how I measure hubs or hub spacing. You guys tune into this video to find out what happens when you move the rear hubs and how can you use it at the racetrack, all right? And I know there's been a lot of debate, and you guys probably spent many nights debating back and forth. I know I have, you know, about what rear hub spacing does. You know, I probably looked a lot like Jim Carrey in Ace Ventura. All right, here we go. Answers right there. Just got to get some blood to the brain. Finkel and Einhorn, Finkel and Einhorn, Finkel and Einhorn. And I'm not going to get into, um, you know, all the physics and stuff that go, goes into it, but I'm gonna give you a really short summary on how it works and how you can apply it, you know, the meat and potatoes of, okay? So, when you move the rear hubs in the go-kart, essentially what you're changing is how the rate in which it, it transfers weight, the go-kart does, and the timing of which it transfers weight, okay? So, what I got here is an example. And again, it's not drawn to scale, don't burn me. And I got it kind of exaggerated so you, so you can see the example, so it helps me explain it, okay? So we're gonna use the left rear for starters, okay? Whenever you have the left rear in, okay, a couple things are gonna happen. One, you're gonna have more static weight on your left rear. Not by much, but you are gonna have more static weight. And then it also shortens the distance between the left rear and the right front. And essentially, what you're doing is speeding up the transfer from the left rear to the right front, and more importantly, from the right front back to the left rear, okay? Now, what happens when you move the left rear out? Well, you're increasing the distance between the left rear and the right front, so you're slowing down the weight transfer between the two tires, and you're not having as much static weight on this tire when it's out further, Okay, so your static weight is less. Also, you know, well, let me, let me stop right there. I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, hold on now, David. You know, the wider the, wider the tires, you know, the, the more stable the rear of the go-kart should be. Well, that's not exactly how it works because, you know, whenever lateral forces hit your go-kart, Okay, and the go-kart starts rolling over on the right sides, on your right rear and your right front, okay? The axle is going to try to pick up the left rear tire, okay? The further out it is, the more lift it's going to have on that left rear, okay? The closer in, it doesn't have as much leverage and it's not going to pick up the left rear as much, okay? Very much like road course racers, if you ever look at a road course go-kart, the, the, the tread width in the back is really wide. Why? Because they're trying to unload the inside rear tire as much as they possibly can. Okay? And I know what you guys right now are thinking. That's where you're wrong, Mox. You're wrong. Now, before some of you guys turn off this video, okay? Let, let, me, let me go a little bit deeper, okay? So, 
I know what you're thinking. Okay, well, if that's the case, then how do I use this? Okay, well, being because the rear tires, you know, and the way the go-kart transfers weight, okay, the more effect you're going to have is when the weight is coming back to the rear tire. That's when you're going to see the biggest change in the, in the chassis setup. If you move the left rear out, will it slow down transfer to your right front? Yes, it will, but you won't see as big of a change in the go-kart as you will with the weight coming back to the left rear, okay? So, how do you use this at the racetrack? Well, if the go-kart is tight or pushing on entry, then you need to come to your right rear and you need to move it out because that's where the weight is heading to the rear tire. It's moving towards the rear tire, so if you move the right rear out, it will slow down transfer to your right rear and cause the go-kart to turn. If you have a push or tight condition um, at the apex and to exit of the turn, then you need to move the left rear out. If it's loose on exit, you will move the left rear in because again, you have a bigger effect on the chassis and the way it drives on weight coming towards the rear tires. So you would want to increase the speed it comes back to the left rear to have the back end sit down more on turn exit. Same with, with turn entry. If the go-kart is really loose on turn entry, right, you want to speed up the transfer to the right rear and have the go-kart sit on the right rear faster so you would move the right rear tire any closer to the chassis. Yeah! I read you. Well, guys, you know, that is a, a, a quick summary of how rear hub spacing works, okay? But don't take my word for it. Go to the racetrack, try it yourself, okay? And until next time, guys, racing is hard. Don't be leaving no speed in the trailer.